So in this video I'm going to take you with me on my photo walk I did yesterday where I used my Sigma 150mm macro lens and I'm also gonna show you some of my editing afterwards. I truly love this lens even though it is a little bit big and heavy but I love it because it's a great great macro lens with a good perspective because of the long focal length and it's also great for portraits and photographing bigger animals like swans as you will see in this video. People often ask me about macro photography how I find all these bugs and the answer is really quite simple. You just need to look for them more intently. When you're out just walking normally you will never see many of these because you need to stand in front of a plant for a minute or two and just look before you start noticing that it is crawling with small small bugs and creatures everywhere. Unfortunately I didn't have a flash with me on this photo walk so I couldn't really take any good photos of the snails in the forest since the focal plane had to be very shallow. But with a shallow focal plane you can take really nice photos of flat flowers as these. I like the simplicity of the composition you can get when you have an f2.8 aperture and take a close up of a flower like this. I'm lucky enough to live very close to a lot of beautiful nature. We have forests, lakes and uh, yeah, everything you can imagine basically within a few minutes walking distance. And I try to take advantage of this as often as possible. On this particular day it had just been raining and it was very warm and hazy outside. Which makes for good opportunities to take photos of droplets and snails which were everywhere yesterday. Here I'm walking on the military bridge over Lake Magelungen in southern Stockholm. This is always a beautiful place and I come back here as often as I'm walking close by. And a nice thing with this place as well, besides the nature, is that there is always a group of swans here, at least in the summer. And they are always great fun to try to snap a good photo of. And the Sigma 150mm on a full frame camera has just the right reach for swans. I also couldn't resist the temptation to take a shot of a leaf on this railing here. Short depth of field and railings always go well together. You always get interesting photographs. It was a truly beautiful day and I walked for around 12 kilometers in total. I also found this trollslända, I'm not sure what the English word is. And they are a little bit hard usually to capture in a good way, but I think I got a good shot because of the even lighting. I also found this group of flowers close to Farsta in southern Stockholm. I love these flowers, I'm not sure what they are called, but I love them because they are very beautiful and photos of them often come out really good and they often have bumblebees and bees on them. I will show you in a minute how I edited these photos. Since I didn't have a flash with me, I had to rely on natural light and very short depth of field. But I think it's fun to do that sometimes. So let's look at some editing. First of all, I very often underexpose photos on purpose. And the way I do this is uh, maybe a topic for a whole separate video. Then after that I adjust the whites to lift the white on the tail of the bumblebee a bit. And I also lift the shadows a bit so that you can see the details in the flower. Then I like to play around with the colors a bit to make them a bit more interesting. I'm strengthening the yellow here on the bumblebee to make it a bit more striking. Then I want to do something about the color of the flower. I want to make it a little bit more vivid. Let's see if we can find a nice tone. I like this tone. Uh, it doesn't look too weird, but it looks a little bit more interesting than before. 
I would also like to create a nice color contrast with the background so that the background looks a little bit more alive. And I wanted to make it a little bit more in this tone. I'm starting to like the look of this. I also like to add a little bit of vignetting. Quite often the lens does this for me, but uh, in some cases I want to add some additional vignetting. I also take down the uh, saturation and vibrance a little bit so that it doesn't look like too colorful. And now we're starting to arrive at something I'm quite happy with. Just a few more small adjustments and we should have something nice. And that's the final result. Let's compare it with how it looked previously. You can see that there aren't like huge changes, but still they make a lot of difference in the feeling of the image. If you liked this video, please follow me on Instagram or 500px, where I'm called MWRoll. If you're interested in any of the products, like the lens mentioned in this video, you have the links in the description. And please subscribe if you want to see more of my photography videos. See you soon again.